Hey, it's Ethan here at eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the eTrailer J-Style Kayak Carrier and how it fits on our 2022 Lincoln Navigator. This is just going to be focusing on how it works for this specific vehicle. So if you want to get really in-depth about the Kayak Carrier, feel free to check out the full review at eTrailer.com. If you have a large kayak and you need a place to take it, a J-Style Carrier like this one from eTrailer is a great option. I like the J-Style because it supports the kayak very well and it doesn't take up too much space on your crossbars. So in the event that you want to get maybe another kayak up there or some other roof accessories, you definitely can. This carrier does come with the strap kit as well, which features our two central straps with the cam buckles, as well as the two, the bow and the stern strap, which also come with their built-in dog bone adapters. So we have one under our hood and we have one in the hatch. Let's check a little bit more about how it works. To get a closer look at that front adapter, we'll pop the hood open. And you can see that this is where it gets that name because it has that dog bone style shape. So you can find a nice secure place that's not going to damage anything under the hood to keep that and prevent the straps from moving around. To get it off, you just find a way to work the strap around the adapter or however you have it configured. In my case, I'll just feed this front end through, pop it out just like that. Then we'll come up to this cam buckle. You have these on every strap. They're also really nice. They do have that protective sleeve in the event that your buckle, which is metal, makes contact with your car, prevent it from scratching it up. Also, it has this built-in elastic so we can fold up that excess and get that in there too. So our next step is just going to be to take that excess out and pull the strap through the buckle. And then we'll have to get up there and release it from our handle. This just feeds around itself again, so we'll release it and pull the excess through and repeat the process for the back side. For the back side, same thing. Start by removing that excess and feeding this through. Or you can start in the hatch if you'd like to get that adapter out first, whichever way you want to do it. But we'll take the time now while I'm opening the hatch to see what kind of clearance we have. So the Navigator not only is a very tall vehicle, but it's also very long. And we have plenty of room with our crossbars, even in the front position, where we have tons of room and we're not making contact with our hatch, with the kayak. So I can close this up. And then I can hop up here. And I can get the rest of the strap out, just like we did on the front. It kind of feeds into itself. And then we'll move on to the straps in the middle. With our straps in the middle, they're essentially the same thing. They have that nice padding that goes around our buckle in the event that it makes contact with our kayak. For right strap, it does not. So we'll just start by undoing that buckle and feeding the excess through and over the top. We'll come over to this back one. Same thing, here we actually do need that padding because our buckle would make contact. So depending on your setup, you may or may not need them, but it's always nicer to have them and not need them than not have them if you want them. So same thing, just undo that, get the excess through, and now we can get our kayak removed. Now we come to the fun part, which is getting our pretty large kayak off the top of a pretty tall vehicle. So if you do have another set of hands, I definitely recommend grabbing them. For the case of this e-trailer carrier, the J isn't super aggressive like some other carriers, so it's actually gonna make it getting off a little bit easier, <clears throat> but it is missing a couple of the things that some other more intricate options have, like the ramp that you can set the kayak on, so loading it up might be a little bit trickier. In my case, I just sort of try to tilt it forward as best as I can and let gravity do some of the work for me, catch the other side, and then I can get the carry or the kayak up off. With the kayak unloaded, we can take a closer look at the carrier and how it works. So again, you can see that it has a J style. We also see that it is made of aluminum, so it's really lightweight, but it still is able to support 150 pounds. So the heaviest kayak that I can imagine anyone would want to put on here. We also have rubber pads that go around the top and the bottom to keep the carrier safe, but also keep your kayak safe as well. We have this pad at the bottom that flexes to again, support your kayak, keep it from moving around and protect it while you're on the road. 
we have these two cam levers on the side, which are how we adjust it. So if we want to release those, that's how we wind up with the carrier in the stored position, which is nice that it has that option and it folds down. So if you don't want to, or if you want to leave it on your crossbars without the kayak on there, it takes up a lot less space and creates a little bit less wind noise. Granted, anything you put up on your roof on these crossbars is gonna generate a little bit of that. We'll get a couple of measurements so you can get an idea of how much height you'll add to your whole roof with it in the folded position and with it in one of the taller positions where you might actually be storing it in the kayak. So from the top of the crossbar to the top of the tallest point would probably is this J, comes in at about four and a half inches. If we want to measure from the top of the crossbar to the top of one of the taller points, in our case back here, that's coming in at 16 and three quarters inches. So if you move it up or down a little bit with those micro adjustments, that's subject to change, but that's a rough idea of how much height you'll be adding. Like I mentioned earlier, because we have this small form factor, if we want to get some other things on our crossbars, we definitely can. These are 59 inch crossbars and we have a ton of space on the other side. So if we want to get another kayak up there, definitely could do that. If we want to get maybe a roof box or roof basket for some extra storage, we could do that too. To get the carrier loaded up, it's pretty straightforward. It's tool free, but it's a little bit more intricate than some other ones. So we have these two hand threadable knobs that keep this rubberized plate in underneath. The plate itself is metal, but it does have that rubber coating on the outside to protect your crossbars, which in our case are arrow crossbars and it works really well, but the clamps will work with square, round, factory crossbars, whatever you want to throw at it. Overall, if you're looking for a really entry level way to get a kayak up to 150 pounds, where you need it to go, not gonna take up a ton of space and can fold down and save some space on that crossbars when you're not using your kayak. The e-trailer kayak carrier is definitely a solid option. It's missing a couple of bells and whistles that you'll get from higher level carriers, like maybe somewhere to hold your straps in the back while you're getting them over, as well as the installation process isn't the most straightforward and those clamps kind of just aren't my favorite thing. But again, they're really durable and I think they'll do a great job of keeping your kayak secure and getting it where you need it to go. This again was just a look at the e-trailer kayak carrier and how it fits on a 2022 Lincoln Navigator.